Hey everyone, Jeff here from Films at Home, and in today's video we need to talk about why older movies that were shot on film can look so incredible on the 4K Ultra HD Blu-ray format and on your 4K TV, and why you should not ignore these when building a new home theater and starting your collection. everyone thanks for coming back to the channel today for this video if you've been following me for a while you may know that I've done a similar video like this just about four years ago at this point and it's one of the most popular videos on my channel now four years ago I had no idea what I was doing on YouTube so thank you all for sticking with me but that video is out of focus it's completely filmed incorrectly it sounds horrible and it's such an important topic that i wanted to make sure i did a refresher plus we've gained so many new subscribers and a much larger audience since then that i want to make sure you all see this so i'm still seeing in the comments people talking about you know i just got a 4k setup why would i buy it's a wonderful life why would i buy blade runner why would i buy jaws those are old movies. I want to watch Avatar. I want to watch Black Panther. I want to watch the latest, greatest from Christopher Nolan. Like, that's what I want to see. I want to see these colorful, digitally shot, clean movies. And while I agree, some of those can look great. We'll talk about the, the cons to some of those movies and where you may see a dip in quality. The movies that are shot on film from as far back as the 1920s, 30s, 40s, 50s, you know, decades and decades of movies that were shot on film can be an incredible experience on your 4K TV. And I want to help you understand why that is and why you should not be sleeping on these movies when thinking about stuff to buy for your 4K collection. So the first thing you have to really understand is the difference between film and digital. When we're talking about film and digital, it's sort of apples and oranges when you're comparing resolutions, but you can give a rough estimate as to how a certain film stock matches up to a digital resolution and kind of do that comparison. It's not perfect, but the general consensus is that the Blu-ray format, 1080p HD, fully uncompressed Blu-ray discs, they have just over 2 million pixels. A 4K Ultra HD disc has just over 8 million, 8.3 million pixels, four times more than Blu-ray. So those are important numbers to remember, and that's true if somebody shoots their movie as a 2K digital intermediate or a 4K digital intermediate. That's the resolution that they're shooting at, and that is as high as it can go. Sometimes they do shoot digitally at higher, 6, 8K resolutions, but there are very, very few movies that have been rendered any higher than 4K. So think about that. 2 million pixels for Blu-ray, call it. 8 million pixels for 4K. That's sort of the limits. Now, when we talk about film, you've got three different types of film that primarily have been used in Hollywood. The biggest one being 35 millimeter. That's the most common, but you also have 16 millimeter and then you have 65, 70 millimeter, which a lot of times is just a blown up version of 35 millimeter movies, but there are a few films that have been shot in that format. If we think about resolution, again, remembering Blu-ray 2 million, 4K 8 million, a 16 millimeter shot film is somewhere around that Blu-ray mark. It's somewhere around 2 million pixels. So 16 millimeter hits right at about HD Blu-ray, maybe a little bit higher. This is gonna be a movie like Texas Chainsaw Massacre. If you look at the great Blu-ray transfer that was done and the new 4K disc, they're very, very close in terms of detail and resolution because there's not much more you can squeeze out of 16 millimeter to really go to 4K. Now, if we talk about 35 millimeter, general consensus is anywhere from 10 to 20 million pixels is what a 35 millimeter film could get squeezed out of it in a digital transfer. So 4K being 8 million, it's basically on the lower and right around 4k resolution and could be higher even closer to like a 6k resolution if it had a pristine source and other things matter lighting and technology that was used but somewhere in 10 to 20 million so a standard 35 millimeter movie has more data in it than a digitally shot 4k movie and if we think about 65 or 70 millimeter for those rare instances that's 30 to 40 million pixels which is essentially equal to about 8k resolution and that's why i say 8k resolution really only makes sense for those movies because otherwise 35 millimeter stuff shot on hd stuff shot in 4k digital 
it just can't get to that higher resolution. It just doesn't make sense unless the technology in Hollywood gets better. But we have 100 years of movies that wouldn't see any benefit to 8K, which is why it doesn't really make sense as a format. But that's another topic. So if you think about that, right, you're thinking about 35 millimeter. That's your primary format. That's what most movies that were shot on film were shot with. That's got a higher resolution natively than 4K Ultra HD digitally shot movies stuff like the batman that was shot at 4k up to about 6k that's about equal to a 35 millimeter movie and that movie looks fantastic there's other stuff like marvel movies often are shot down at 2k resolution so if you think those look fantastic there's a lot more detail and a lot more data in a 35 millimeter film than there is in those 2k digitally shot movies so the point is when they take a 35 millimeter reel and they go to scan that at 4k resolution they're actually having to take it down a step because it's probably even higher resolution than that depending on how great a source it has but what it means is that 4k is really sort of the tipping point for 35 millimeter and that's why it's such an important format for these movies that were shot on film, like a Jaws, which looks absolutely incredible on 4K because this is pulling all of the data out of that film reel. It is giving you the best presentation. It has even more data to pull from than if Steven Spielberg had a 4K camera in 1974 when he shot the movie. And that's why it can look so fantastic as a 4K transfer. So that's the basics of like why you shouldn't sleep on older movies. And it really comes down to the fact that film resolution, 35 millimeter and up, is much higher quality, just speaking resolution wise, than 2k or 4k digitally shot movies there's just a lot more data now that's not to say every movie shot on film looks pristine you know they don't there's lots of film stock differences stuff in the 70s looks pretty rough for the most part there's some color fading that can happen there's lots of restoration work that has to go into that that you don't have to do with a digital release but if you get a really pristine looking print like 2001 a space odyssey and you bring that to the 4k format that's going to look better than 99% of stuff that's coming out new in theaters today. It's just an incredible experience with so much detail and so much rich color that you get from that film stock. So ultimately, when you're looking at which movies to buy on 4K, I know a lot of you will probably want to gravitate towards the latest, greatest movies, the John Wicks, the Marvel movies, the DC movies, whatever's come out, you know, the latest, greatest technology. The reality is though, if you bought the 1080p Blu-ray of those movies and compare it to the 4K, the difference is going to be minimal. The Blu-ray is going to look great, the 4K is going to look great. However, if you take a Blu-ray release of a movie which has not been restored and had an old film transfer and you get a new 4K restoration of that movie, it's going to blow you away. And I think people don't realize that until they pop it in. Put 2001 A Space Odyssey into your 4k player and tell me you're not blown away put blade runner into your 4k player put apocalypse now put grease into your 4k player and tell me you're not blown away the difference in the leap in upgrade between 1080p blu-ray and 4k ultra hd blu-ray when it comes to older movies that have those 35 millimeter it's just incredible. It's a huge leap forward that you're just not going to see with modern stuff that's shot on digital cameras. And the last note here is that, yes, film has grain. So you should never expect something, if it's in 4K, that doesn't mean it's not going to have grain. It doesn't mean it's going to look like Gemini Man or Marvel Avengers Endgame. That's not what Jaws is going to look like. That's not what 2001 Space Odyssey is going to look like. It's shot on film, so it has grain. That's part of film. Digital has noise, film has grain. So if you see grain, that's not a bad thing. It should be there. If you don't see it, that means it's been scrubbed and it's actually lost some detail. So I often see people say, this movie, it's so grainy, I can't make out anything. Look at past releases of that same movie and you'll see how big a difference this is. You can't compare apples to oranges and compare the way that Rocky looks on 4K to the way that Avengers Endgame looks on 4K. Rocky on 4K is as good as it's ever looked, 
so is Endgame. Put them together, not a fair comparison, but just understand that Rocky looks as good as it can right now, and it's an incredible transfer, much like other 35mm movies, and that's why it's really important not to sleep on those old movies, and you guys should be picking up these things like Casablanca, and new releases from Warner Brothers like Rebel Without a Cause, and The Maltese Falcon, and Cool Hand Luke, The Great Escape, and Some Like It Hut from Kino Lorber, some of the great Criterion, and even black and white stuff because of HDR looks incredible on the 4K format. So please do not sleep on these older movies. They deserve just as much attention. And honestly, I usually have a much better viewing experience with them than the latest stuff because I feel like I'm just getting more from the 4K disc. It's a bigger upgrade than what you're used to. So that is it. Hopefully that helps clear some stuff up. If you guys want more information, I'm no cinematographer. I'm no expert on like film and resolution and film transfers. I'm trying to interview more people like that on my podcast. Definitely trying to learn more about it. But I just wanted to make sure this video got refreshed and got out there and it didn't look like crap because it did before on YouTube. Because this is such an important topic that everybody who collects 4K movies and invests in a 4K system in a home theater really needs to understand or you're doing yourself a disservice. So if you want some recommendations on great 4K discs that were movies that were shot on film, I'll put some purchase links down in the description. If you click those, that helps support my channel. But just remember, keep in mind that every film is different. You can't compare one film to another from different time periods. But don't just write off a film because it was done in the 1960s. It could be one of the best looking discs in your collection. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope this was helpful. I hope this cleared some stuff up. And I hope this inspires more of you to go out and buy older movies because they definitely deserve all the support. So if you're interested in more content like this, follow me here on YouTube. Make sure you're subscribed. Follow me on social media. You can also check out the Films at Home podcast. And of course, check all the links in my description for ways you can support me and the channel and my partners, which I appreciate. So thank you for watching. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe. Stay healthy out there. Long live film and I will talk to you all soon.